and we split the company into three in October of last year, I said that things would get dramatically better for Curry Baya in tier one prior to us returning to trade. And they most certainly have. And being a little bit of a victim of our own success in, in the most important way possible, you know, Curry Baya came to life post us coming off the board. We got our drill permit in December. We got age dating confirming that we're the same age as those major mines next door. We've pulled our highest grade samples since then and learned the most important factor of Curry Baya, which was that third dimension potential. The Financial Survival Network. Now more than ever. The Financial Survival Network. And welcome. You are watching and listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. Well, it's been billed as the largest unexplored silver project in the world. I'm talking about our sponsor, Tier One Silver. We are back with co chair, co founder, and director Ivan Bebek, and of course, President and CEO Peter Dembicki. And we've got some exciting news. Finally, finally, at last, uh, listing is within grasp. Peter, tell us what's going on here. Good to see you again, Kerry. Thanks for having us. Uh, yeah, it was an exciting uh, day yesterday. You know, we finally got word back from from the exchange that uh, they've recommended us to be listed. We got our conditional listing approval. So, you know. The shareholders that have been so patient with us, those that were, you know, not able to take part in the the private placement financing that we've had, those that have been following us for for so long, uh, wanting us to be listed, it's that vote of confidence that that things are are on the right track, and and we are within we feel you know days of 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 achieving that listing finally. So, yeah, it was it was a big vote of confidence. It was a, it was a nice nice piece of news to get back. Yeah, that is great news. So the exchange we're talking about, of course, is the uh, TSX Venture. And if you're a U.S. investor, you'll be able to buy shares very shortly. We've kind of been teasing you with this for a couple of months now, because like we know in life, everything takes longer than you think. Uh, you'll be able to buy it through, uh, well, my own brokerage, and I'm not a, they're not a sponsor endorsement or anything else. I just use them. Uh, interactive brokers. There's a couple of other ones, Peter. Yeah, I believe so. I mean, we've been doing our research with our with our shareholders that have been asking uh, our U.S. based shareholders how do we how do we access the TSX Venture. So, I know that uh, if you have a discount brokerage account with Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade, you could also trade uh, TSX Venture stocks. But also for for everybody else that might have a full service full service account or a brokerage account down in the U.S. Uh, day one of listing on the TSX Venture, our application goes in that's fully filled out, ready to go uh, to list on the OTC. Uh, of course, we have to go through that process, having the sponsor, getting DTC eligibility for clearance and everything. So we anticipate that, you know, they tell us three weeks and uh, are we going to tell the shareholders that? So we, we anticipate three, four, five weeks for, for that to be fully completed and done and for that to be listed on the OTC. Yeah, well, you cer certainly jump through a lot of hoops here and a lot of issues, all of which are technical in nature, have absolutely nothing to do with the company, with its uh, prospects and its projects. It's really just the bureaucratic stuff, right? Yeah, you know what? Every, everybody has a job to do. Uh, and, you know, as, as eager as we are to have our company listed, uh, we feel the excitement as everybody else the orange shareholders that have been so patient throughout this process, uh, new shareholders that can't wait to, to own us from family offices, funds, institutional investors, retail, like uh, we really want to give everybody the opportunity to, to own us. And so, you know, the, the exchange that they're, they're, they are the gatekeepers and they have to ensure that, that uh, everything is, is lined up perfectly. So we appreciate that. Um, course we want everything to be expedited uh we, we we don't want to have to go through all this and put our shareholders through it but uh we totally get it and uh sometimes good things take time and uh you know so it's it's, it's part of the process and uh, as frustrating as it is yeah well i'm extraordinarily happy about it because i've been looking at my brokerage statement and it says i've got shares 
in tier one, but nothing else, you know, no, no market value, no uh, listing, no nothing. So all that's going to change really quickly. And that's got to be exciting. So in the meantime, while you've been seeking, pursuing the listing, Ivan, you haven't exactly been sitting around doing nothing here. Like I know you, you're up every day at the crack of dawn, literally. The only one I know who gets up earlier than you is uh, Bill Powers. And you've been doing a lot of stuff here because the listing, let's face it, is really just a pro forma, you know, something you have to go through, you know, meet the, uh, jump through the hoops and, uh, and make the uh, standards. And then you're in. So, but in the meantime, you got a company to run. Yeah, thanks, uh, Kerry. Look, first off, uh, thank you all who've waited, uh, all the orange shareholders and new shareholders, you know, waiting to come in. Thank you all for your patience. It's something that we forecasted originally to happen in February. But if you remember back to my words when we split the company into three in October of last year, I said that things would get dramatically better for Curry Baya in tier one prior to us returning to trade. And they most certainly have. And being a little bit of a victim of our own success in the most important way possible, you know, Curry Baya came to life post us coming off the board. We got our drill permit in December. We got age dating confirming that we're the same age as those major mines next door. We've pulled our highest grade samples since then and learned the most important factor of Curry Bio, which was that third dimension potential. So when you're applying for listing and you're making your project dramatically better, plus we did some other acquisitions, which we'll talk about later in this company's lifeline. But you know, when you start making your project better, you're going to naturally cause a little bit of a teaching necessary. And you know, the exchange has been, uh, you know, I have to say it's been slow, but no fault to them. You know, we, we wish we were the only file on their desk. And what we've heard from the exchange is that the majority of the companies applying for listing are mining companies, which is very positive for the market and for what's to come. And I've, I've touched on that previously. So we got into a bit of a logjam, no question. Um, in the end, you know, it's about what's going to happen next than what happened before, which is what I'm most excited about. And as you've said, Carrie, it's a little speed bump along the road that's somewhat consequential. We all need liquidity and to trade. But more importantly, you know, the asset has a chance to become the largest, you know, or one of the most impressive silver discoveries globally, you know, and that's that case has gotten a lot stronger since February, since the last financing that we did. And our confidence is really high. And then, as you said, you know, I get up, actually, I'll, I'll compete with Bill. I probably, it's still dark out and I'm in, in Vancouver right now where, where it's sunlight at early hours. I'm probably up at 5 a.m. or 4.45 every day. And I don't need to be, but I choose to be because this is so, so exciting on so many levels. And, you know, what I see going forward is a, an incredible market, an incredible opportunity. And, you know, some curry bias, something that, that doesn't come along very, very often. Since we were, you know, stuck trying to get listed, we've put our heads down and we've triple prepared to be listed. And what I mean by that is we've put the company in a very, very strong position to have multiple projects that could deliver. We are expanding Curry Baya, the exploration footprint. We were only talking about one third of Curry Baya and that property when we got all that exciting results. But guys are sampling new targets right now away from there. And they're coming out with some really robust numbers. We'll see it soon in press releases from the sampling. And we're doing IP over the rest of the property as well. So we're on a world-class trend. Some of the largest mines in the world and in Peru are next to us. We've got an incredible silver, gold, potentially telescoping into a base metal discovery in front of us. But what else is on the property and, and what's coming back to, to Peter and I from the field is super exciting and it'll soon be out in the marketplace. So, you know, again, I, I thank all the patients. The weight has been traded for a lot better fundamentals of the investment. And I want everyone to appreciate that. You know, if we could have done anything to trade in January, February, we would have done it. We are shareholders too, much like the rest of you. And now, you know, we're, we're at a very good time. We have probably a week to two weeks before we start drilling. People will get a chance to buy or trade as they need to do before we actually drill. 
And then it'll be about three, four weeks to get results. You know, we heard assay times are pretty good in Peru. And so I think that there's a lot of excitement around the corner. A ton of news is going to come out of the company, which I'm sure Peter will touch on here in a minute. But it's going to be a great start and amazing project, but well-prepared company to perform when things start start going and, and start speculating on if we really have this world-class discovery or not. Yeah, for sure. And uh, just just right now, the listing has been all-consuming all encompassing it seems like the most important thing in the world but you know in another 3 to 6 months honestly Ivan nobody's going to remember how long it took you to get a listing that's like uh, your gpa in college when was the last time anybody asked you that as long as we hit the big hole carry no one's going to remember yeah. <laughs> this yeah. company will feel like it was around for 5 minutes not 5 years being orin right and uh, and that's the price you have to pay but the other thing carry I'll bring up is um we've seen uh, some incredible results out of Philo mining recently uh, newfound gold has done extremely well arizona mining these stocks have gone from you know low dollars or dollars to 9 dollars a share some of them and or on their way there and this is a pretty awesome part of the expiration market because people are getting paid for good discoveries again. And this hasn't happened for a decade. It's been very hard to generate that kind of interest without drilling these Hail Mary huge, huge successes. But it's nice to see people making money again for discoveries. It puts the sentiment for a big exploration discovery and a big share price performance back into all shareholders' mindsets. So I think our timing is awesome. It's, it's really surreal. Hey, and it's also indication M&A activity picking up. So eventual exit strategies, if any, are greatly uh, broadened your options. Yeah, production, production cliffs are rampart uh, across the metals. And you're looking at major mining companies that have not done exploration or built exploration portfolios in the last decade. We've talked to a few that have zero properties, and these are huge companies that need to go somewhere to go find it. So we might be their answer, you know, if we find a big one here, and that's that's our goal. Hey, no doubt, and I'm sure the news flow is going to pick up dramatically once this distraction. And it's been a huge distraction. Let's face it, not so much from your efforts, Peter, either, but but in terms of the market, it's been a distraction, and that's the key to keep it in perspective. Like I say, six months. You hit that hole, nobody's going to remember this. But the news flow, I expect, is going to really pick up its pace dramatically, isn't it, Peter? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, you know, for, for shareholders of Oren that have been, you know, stuck in this, uh, uh, you know, purgatory, let's call it zero value in their brokerage accounts. Uh, in Canada, we call it a hockey stick curve. You know, it's going to just whip up with activity after this nice long wait for everybody's head for for new investors for those of you who weren't able to take part in our financing uh who have since learned about the story since we closed the financing and, and want to take part and we know there are there are many of you out there uh what an opportunity to to own this this company uh in in the next few months where you're going to go from listing to commencing of work almost immediately Drilling drill results are going to come back very soon for our, for our first round of drill results. Uh, with many other news news items to happen in between there, you know, so many times you you enter into a story and it's okay. We're still piecing together management, or we're still you know putting our claims into the ground. Uh, we're still kind of figuring out you know how we're going to put this whole story together. But you know we've got two thirds of the puzzle completed. It's going to be great. Everything's done. You know, management, technical team. Uh, work, you know, all our contractors, permits in place, everything is ready to go. So the next few months are going to be such uh, a furious flurry of, of, of news and excitement and results. So if you want to come into the story, as soon as we start trading, you're not going to have to wait very long to, to figure out, you know, how exciting this really is. And then just on that note there, Carrie, um, you know, we all know there's risk in what we do and we're going for a kind of discovery that happens once in a career, if that, right? And that there's risk behind that. But the good news is it'll take us probably about 12 months on the first big target because it's so big and there's so many targets that Curry buy on that first drill program to really miss, right? Which gives us a lot of time to speculate and get the other projects ready for drilling. And the goal here for anybody who hasn't heard or talked to us before is to drill Curry Baya quietly in the background, bring that pipeline of other opportunities that we think 
could meet the same threshold as Curry Baya ready for drilling next year. And so we'll have a consecutive world-class swings across four projects and we get to keep drilling and, and actually we be, get to become a drilling company. And I mean that in the sense of an explorer versus an actual drilling company. What's important about that, carry is drill holes are how we get paid as shareholders. And the more holes you drill, the more chances you get, right? Uh, so the, the fact that we have permits in hand and we get to turn a drill in a, in a week or two or a couple of weeks after listing here, uh, I think it's going to be amazing for shareholders to go on the ride right out the gate versus waiting a month to drill. You know, it's going to be fun. And unlike in other uh, environs, parts of the world, you get to drill year round here. Yeah, we, we do unless the rainy season says to, to pause. Um, that can happen in February, March and get you back in April. But those pauses, carry are really good pauses to take sometimes when you need your geologist to regroup and, and you know, pick the direction and get organized for the next round of drilling. So it's not healthy as an explorer, depending on what you're drilling, to drill, you know, 24 months straight without taking a breather and seeing and seeing how you can be more efficient or target some more of the richer zones. Um, you know, so from that perspective, you know, the important thing for us is then we have other projects that can drill during the rainy season up the coast. It'd be just to be keep the two two drills or a drill that we have and hopefully two drills in short order and just keep those to our projects in Peru so we can we can not run into what happens to many in a bull market is where the drills actually uh, are impossible to find. And, you know, the metal prices, we've all seen them. You know, first quarter was tough. It was the worst sentiment in gold since 2000 was actually when I entered the business. Right. And seeing that sentiment again, you know, was was pretty tough, but very enlightening for me because I, I view those cyclical downturns as springboards. They get pushed down in metals. And we saw crypto take off and we saw that shift that we saw about a year ago happen or two years ago happen again. And now crypto is getting soft and, and metals are starting to come around. But again, very few discoveries are being made compared to how many, how much demand is going forward in these metals, right? It's a new metal market. The battery metal, the silver, copper, all of those new metal demands are off the charts. It's, it's going to be a new paradigm for us in the metal market going forward. We talk a lot about how you forget quickly how long it took to get listed when you drill that first hole because the stock potentially does extremely well out the gate, right? But you have to think about the metals. Does anybody remember when silver was $6 an ounce, when gold was $260 an ounce when I entered the business? You know, now it's at 1800. I mean, people forget that quickly. But the good news is that we are positioned before the bull market and those metals happen, right? Why did we add more to Kuribaya? Because it's going to be very difficult to do very reasonable asset deals, probably in the second half of this year or later this year. Owners are going to want a lot. Metal prices are going to be through the roof. And if you don't have it now, you're going to lose time because it takes time to acquire a project to get it drill ready, that's our enemy. Time is our enemy. Time is money, time costs time. We've, we've taken care of all that. To Peter's comments, we are ready to go with the drill. And by the time we're figuring out Curry Baya, we're gonna have three more projects on the backside to drill as well. So this is about as good as we could have done it for shareholders. Would have loved to have a much shorter time to listing, but I do even more appreciate much more than the, than the time of listing if we did that sooner is, is what we've been able to do in terms of the project pipeline that the company has. And just as a reminder, even though it's ancient history now, you could have just spun out all the companies at once, but then shareholders, especially in the U.S., would have uh, faced a major tax bill for what we uh, often refer to as uh, phantom income. So there was a real reason why this deal had to be structured in the way it was. Well, I'll, I'll add to that, Kerry. Um, we don't have our access yet at Sombrero. And we're way, we expect to have it here in short order. Um, it'd be tough to be trading with Sombrero without access on Sombrero. You know, we've been very patient renewing a community agreement and looking to get a new access agreement. And we've, we've done a tremendous amount there. You'll hear about it later. On tier one, um, we didn't have the asset profile that we do now. We didn't know. Curry Bio was so conceptual when we split. So that little gap not only saved people a big tax bill they would have had to deal with, which would have been payable in April uh, this year, it actually put us in the position to strengthen the opportunity to get a great CEO and Peter to strengthen our team 
to get to the mature stage, to get a drill permit in hand when we're drilling. So I think, yeah, we've lost a bit of time. And I've talked about how important time is, but we've, we've used it very wisely. And, you know, for me as a, a shareholder of all three from the orange side, I, I'm going to be ecstatic when I can see that portfolio start to take notice of the value of tier one. And then Sombrero, I think is a couple months behind this, right? So it's going to be fun. Second half of the year is going to be amazing for our entire group. We're going to be drilling a lot and it's going to be time to make that discovery and, and to potentially capitalize on that huge return we've been talking about 10, 20, 30 X that these things can, can generate. Um, if silver does anything, half of what people think it can do and goes to 40 or $50 an ounce and we're drilling a big silver discovery. I don't even want to fantasize on this interview of where our share price could go, but that would be a, a new market that it'd be impossible to anticipate because of how crazy that would be in terms of potential value for shareholders. So I think it's quite serendipitous that we're at the forefront, not just of a big discovery, but of the silver price, the gold price, copper price, all metal prices about to take off the bull market, essentially. So we, we've planned this. It's a long route. It's been five, six years for some of you uh, since you bought Orin. And uh, but the worth the weight has to be worth it. That's the way we run our companies. It's going to take time to go for the big ones. But that's why we go for the big ones, because the worth is, is always worth it. The weight is always worth it. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, sometimes the timing appears to work against you. And like you implied here, Ivan, it actually winds up working out in your favor and you get some uh, blowback in the short term, but in the long term, it really works out for the best. So you got to go take a look at tier1silver.com. I believe the, uh, the symbol is going to be TSLV. That's the one you've reserved. Correct. All right. And so sign up for the notifications. That way you'll find out right away when the listing is active. Again, tier1silver.com. If you got any questions for Ivan or Peter, feel free to send me an email. The address is kl at kerrylutz.com. Ivan, Peter, thanks so much for taking time out and giving us this update. Thank you very much. Thanks, Appreciate Peter. it. The Financial Survival Network.